Hey, what's happening, guys? Nice to see you all today. Sorry I missed a video yesterday, but I woke up with no voice. It's better today, but still not quite where it should be. Anyway, I was having some shoulder pain last night, and I dug this guy out of the closet and put it on. It's a uh, TENS unit. Uh, what is it? Trans something neurological stimulator. It sends pulses of electricity through your skin to stimulate your nerves and basically short circuit the pain signals heading back to your brain. It's a super cheap one I bought. You, uh, you have three controls. You have the mode. See it's blinking mode one now. There's mode two. Then we can control this is like the power level and this is frequency so really that's it as far as controls go now they attach to your skin with these little gel based sticky pads and they attach to the unit with just a little cord with like a headphone cord on it and there's two ports so you can use four pads at a time I've never done it. I only used two. So I thought we would start out by looking at the voltage that comes across this. I just cut the ends off a couple of them so that we can access the leads. Alrighty. So obviously there's a capacitor in there because you're seeing some capacitive action. All right, we power it up. So we're seeing 100 millivolts AC. Now you're seeing a ramping going on. And we crank it up there about halfway. We're seeing around 100 millivolts. So the voltage is remaining stable. And that must be a interval. Interval frequency, that's easy to mess up. I wonder why they did that like that. And changing the frequency. Yeah, it looks like changing the frequency does change the um, the voltage a little bit and of course that has to do with the true RMS averaging of this of the of the meters all right so let's get rid of the fluke not really get rid of it it's gonna put it off to the side kind of like it and we'll bring in the oscilloscope probe let's zoom out don't worry I will put you on the oscilloscope shortly we hook up our probes we hook up our leads rather oh, that was already off and we'll zoom in on the oscilloscope and I'm going to turn the unit on we've got a nice flat line and I'm going to increase to one unit of power okay let's zoom in there so you can see what's going on see the spikes little pulses I've got two units of power let's increase the frequency there you go, you should be able to see them quite well now. And if we bring up the measure window, we're looking at a frequency of about two and a half hertz. What I want to see are the uh, pulse timings. Okay pointy stick so our frequency is alternating between two and a half to like 3.1 Hertz 
duty cycles going from 61.6 percent .6 down to nothing and our positive pulse width is 192.8 we we'll call it 193 milliseconds with a period of 385 milliseconds our negative pulse width it's not reading it rise time is a millisecond 200 microseconds okay interesting information there now let me uh i'm going to crank it all the way up and maximum frequency as well get out of there go away okay there we go now it's back stop that okay I guess we'll stick with that window all right let's go to mode 2 now mode 2 has increased our frequency to 5 Hertz oh 20 Hertz okay rise time of 24 milliseconds let's go to mode 3 looks a lot like mode 2 Whoa, a little bit of latency on my scope there. Now, if you watch that, you can kind of see a pulse wave there. Let's wait for it to come back. It's on a like, it's like a little delay here. Okay, there it is. There's our actual pulses. basically square wave pulses let's go to mode four I forgot you gotta reset the power every time you do it so those are mode four nothing changes it's just a little bit of difference in timing all right let's open it up what do we expect to find obviously batteries George yes thank you um, some sort of microprocessor perhaps uh, maybe a display controller and then something something to generate pulses uh, transformer for the voltage what else Oh, tricky. You know, they always like to hide them under the stickers. All right, let's open her up and see what we got. Okay. So we're getting the back side, and it's just a paper composite board. And we've got an electrolytic capacitor, polyester capacitor, and an inductor. You know your inductor color codes? Guess who doesn't? Me. I'd have to look that up. So yeah, if you're new, um, I always tell people to learn their resistor color codes, but I never learned the inductor color codes. It's not something I need all the time. What are you so stuck with? that screw okay so this is definitely built as cheaply as possible whoa you see what I see and which is absolutely nothing Okay, there's a blob under there. That's it. Um, we've got some passive components. We've got... Uh, let's zoom in. Let 
Why don't you focus? Come on. There we go. Got a diode. Resistors. One, two, three, four, five transistors. There's another resistor there. Uh, lots of resistors and capacitors there. Oh, I bet you I just ended the life of this thing. I hate zebra strips. Well, it's off now. Ugly soldering. A couple of test points. That's really it. That's incredibly simple. I thought for sure there'd be a microprocessor. <laughs> and then, uh, what did we tear down last week? I thought it would have a current shunt, and it didn't. Oh, that's switching uh, surge strip. Guess I'm losing my touch. But if you still like me, even though I'm losing my touch, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, and share, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. These are cool. They can't hurt you. I mean, they cause a little pain if you turn them up too high, but, you know, you can't do any damage with them. That's it. I'm out. Peace.